Hey, welcome to the channel, and I just got done installing an NSS8 Triumph four-post lift that you can buy off of Amazon. And my plan was just to order this lift off of Amazon. So I went online, went to Amazon, and typed in four-post lift. And these are, uh, well, oh, okay, these are sponsored. And these are the options that popped up. And ultimately, I went with the Triumph NSS8 8,000 pounder. This uh, Mayflower, that wasn't there when I actually bought they, I think they're new players, but the lift looks to be exactly the same, so that might be an option for you. Click on that and go in there, and they have all the information you need. The caveat to doing this is it is free shipping, but they bring it to your driveway, and you have to figure out a way to unload it. Now, the box is 14 feet long, and the shipping weight is 1,600 pounds, so you're just not going to huff this huff the trailer yourself. You have to wait to have... You have to have a way to do that, and I didn't have that. And so what you can do is when you order it, you can talk to the shipping company and just see if they'll leave it at the dock, and maybe you can show up with a car trailer and they'll load it up for you. And that was my plan, but I really wanted to take a look at, at you know, I wanted to put my fingers on it. And so this is sold by National Auto Tools, so I decided to look them up. National Auto Tools and they've got a nice looking website they've got here's the four post lifts and yeah they got a they got a bunch of different options here they've got a fire truck on one that's 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 awesome and they have a couple of warehouses looks like they have one in las vegas they got another one in columbus ohio and look at this they've got one right here in fort worth texas and that is where i moved it turns out this thing is only about 15 miles from where i live so i called them up said you got a like a showroom floor can I come down and look at it? and they said yeah so that is exactly what i did and I found myself looking at a showroom floor and I was able to put my finger right on the lift I was looking at, talk to the people down there and I had a good feeling about it. So I decided to make a deal and I paid $4,005.25 out the door. It was uh, absolutely fantastic. They loaded me up um, and you notice I actually bought two lifts there, but that's for another story. And they even throw in a, like a nine gallon oil drain for free. And I went, away I went, and I headed home. It took uh, the work of a floor jack and an engine hoist to get this thing off the trailer and into the garage. This is what you get. The entire thing is held together by these black metal framework pieces that you can discard when you're done, including the bolts. And uh, I got to say, it was pretty well packed up. I mean, they got to come all the way from China and on a probably a slow boat. But uh, I spent the next little bit tearing it all down and uh, getting out the uh, uprights and moving on. All right, I got it tore down some more and it looks like all the parts are here. I did find the instruction book and it came with, you know, the important stickers to throw up and down the side that I doubt I will do. Safety manual, um, something there, and a uh, NS8 XLT. I do not have an XLT. I'm pretty sure I don't have an XLT. I didn't want one because it might be too big, but it's obviously not. And it looks like it has, uh, looks all right. Yeah, okay. I, I think I can figure that out. But I'm going to start, oh, let me show you these ramps. So these are the nice aluminum ramps they brag about. Eh, they're, they're okay. Um, they're not amazing. They're definitely not like the ramps on my old machine. But my old machine, new, was like 2500 bucks more than this one. So... Sure, this might be some of the cheapest stuff on the market, but this is where they cut the cost. Anyway, it's going to work. I don't think I'd want to put a huge truck on it or anything, but it's an 8,000 pound lift. So you get what you get for the rating. So I'm going to keep uh, forging ahead.
I ran into my first real problem. The cable routing from the factory is incorrect and it would cause a huge issue if I left it that way. The directions show it being the correct way, so I gotta flip tops to bottom. Let me show you what it is real quick so you can be aware of it, and then I'm gonna fix it and keep on moving. Okay, so this is a connection to the RAM. This RAM pulls in and that lifts everything up. How these run through the pulleys is extremely important because you have these bolts back here. So this top cable runs across and up to that connection. The problem is, so if you let it go as is, it hits this. So you get that. And, and that's not going to work, but if you move it down to the lower pulley, it clears. And so I'm going to have to take this apart, kind of rejigger everything, and make it correct. So I'll get that done. Well, I've got a functioning lift. I ran it all the way up and topped it off and I'm coming down. And then when I let it down, I realized I had too much fluid in it and I've been uh, purging out the extra fluid all over my shorts. So I've got a really good pair of garage shorts. Uh, it takes about two and a half gallons, I'm guessing, before it's all said and done, maybe even a little less than that. They said three, so I put in like two and three quarters and it's just blown there everywhere as soon as I get down to the ground. All right, I didn't get any video of it, but I went ahead and leveled it. It took hardly any time at all. It was stupid simple. Tightened up all the uh, set bolts, and then I went ahead and put on these uh, little covers that go in the corner that have, didn't take long at all, and then I went ahead and assembled the, uh, what it is, a candy lever wheel things or whatever. Anyway, I've got to pull the whole thing back into the garage, six inches or foot, so the handle will clear the garage door. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up and do it now and place it and uh, move on. And I think I am done draining all the extra hydraulic fluid all over the place, so maybe I'm off the hook there, but I'll find out. And done. 
it works, lifts it up, drops it back down, does as intended, very happy with it. I've still got to clean everything up, put away all the, the garbage and everything that came with it, but I'm happy with the purchase. It's not as big or as nice as my last lift, but it's also $2,000 cheaper and I'm not doing any work on it. I am simply storing cars. However, I can't use it to stack cars because my garage door is in the way. I've got 10 foot ceilings and I need to raise that garage door. I think it works out to about 17 inches and I actually have to back this car on to clear the garage door and I gotta get aside. So I'm gonna do that next. And why didn't I do that before while I was um, thinking about how I was gonna get the lift? Well, now I can raise it up and I've got something to stand on because there's springs up there. I've got to uh, lag a new bolts. I've got to cut track down. I got to hang new uh, cable. I'll get into that next. So this is US Energy, and I think there's a couple other companies that basically do the same thing. And what it is, it's just this little thin like insulation with this foil on it with a roll of admittedly pretty cruddy tape that doesn't work very good. And I've got it stuck up on the eight foot wide door of the streetcar garage. And how I did it is I put double-sided tape up on the on the different sections, and then I unscrewed the handles or these hinges, fold them down, stuck it on there, and just put them back up and screwed it on. And does it work? I've got some footage of some temperature gun checks, so let's run that. All right, it is five in the afternoon. It's 97 degrees outside, and I am in the garage with this temperature checker, and it is... 96 degrees on a quarter panel and I've got insulation then on this door and not on that one so let's see how, how hot it is the sun is beating on the other side that says 121 there we go 121 121 again we'll get this panel down here 118. So we're going to say it's 121 degrees. So this sheet metal, 103 up here. So we got 120 here. Let's see what the wall is between the two. Whew, 100 degrees. All right, here is the panels with no, and I can feel the heat coming off of this. So this one, 152.9. Let's check this panel up here. Oh, 152.0, and that is 148.6. That's a good 30 degree difference. So you saw from the heat gun measurements that uh, the best I think I got was a 32 degree temperature difference, 20, 25 degree difference all day long. Well worth doing it. In fact, I think if you took some insulation and shoved them up in the bigger openings and put this stuff on top of it, you'd have some pretty legit insulation. But I got links to it down below. My eyes, well worth the effort to put it on. Anyway, let's get back to raising this door. So this isn't going to be a how to raise your garage door. I'm not qualified to do that. I've put in some doors over in my life, but I'm no expert. So there's three ways you can do this. You can call a garage door company and they can come out and handle the springs, the track, Everything for you, write them in check, go on with your life. That's a great way to do it, and it's something I greatly considered. The next one is you can go online, just do a little Googling, and there are companies that you can put all your information in, and they will send you a kit. They'll come with the track extensions, they'll come with the correct length cables, the correct drums, new springs, everything you need. I priced one out, and it was three to four hundred dollars, and I just didn't want to do that. Not for such a small, lightweight situation where I'm not really moving the door that much. So all I'm going to do is I've got some longer cables I bought off of Amazon. 
I'm simply going to raise the spring and the drums up towards the ceiling and then raise up and extend the track by cutting off the end of the patch piece that I need. And that's it. There are definitely better ways to do that if you have a heavier door, bigger door, and you're going further. The drums are actually different or tapered differently to take into account that you're lifting the door more than going back right away and making the door lighter as you go up. There's a lot of geometry there that I don't understand and not going to get into, but it's important. But I have done it this way on just an 18 inch raise, light door, good to go. I did buy cables. So cables are about 18 inch longer uh, standard than the door opening. So if you have a like an eight foot opening, like what I have here, you have to get cables that are nine and a half feet. Since I'm really going up, not quite 24 feet, I'm just assuming that I am buying cables for a 10 foot door. So it's actually about 11 and a half. So I'm gonna have a couple extra loops here to take up the slack. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Plus to deal with the spring, you need something called winding bars. If you ever break one of these and you buy one online, it comes with a set of winding bars. Um, I've got some in the toolbox, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, start knocking it out. So the difference between my regular door and what I had and what I ended up with is I raised the door 18 inches. I used the same spring, I used the same track, and I just cut the track off the end. I give them that end and that end a 10 degree cut. That's why I measured and it went in, added a bunch of uh, reinforcing, and, and that was pretty much it. Okay, if the car raised up, I have got fifty-six inches, hair bit more to park a car below it. I might have more room. These are the safeties, and it's a little over four inches from bottom to bottom. It's a little. I've got six inches. No comments, please. So I got six inches between the roof and the ceiling. I could go up a little bit more. Okay, so that is as high as I can raise that car. Right now I've got six inches between the ceiling and the roof, and I can't raise it up any more to clear the safety latches. There's only a little over four inches between them, but it just doesn't. It just doesn't work out. So I've got 56 inches between the cement and the bottom of, what was that, that runner. And my other car just barely fits. My garage is 10 foot, two inches high, and it just works. So I'm gonna pull in the other car. That's where the garage door ends up. I got plenty of clearance as long as I back the car on. I don't think if I drove it straight on, if it will clear, but it eh, might be tight, but I think this is uh, go backwards. So this was a lot of work. Um, I probably spent, knocked around on this for a good day getting the lift up, and I spent another good day plus messing around with the garage door because I broke it up around 
the, the rest of my life. It wasn't hard, but it was just a lot of work. And the biggest trick for me was getting it unloaded from the car trailer. I ended up using an engine hoist and a lot of sweat equity to get it done. If I didn't rent the car trailer and it was mine, I think I would have just torn it down on the car trailer and fit it into the garage piece by piece. I've seen these sold on Facebook Marketplace. They will buy it and show up for 800 bucks, 1200 bucks, and set it up for you. That might be worth it. If you just don't want to mess with the, de the delivery and the install, 800 bucks might go a long way. Anyway, on the garage door, I did it on the cheap, and it seems to work okay. But if it was a bigger door, heavier door, I might have farmed that one out too. Either bought a, the correct kit to get the geometry correct with the uh, springs, or just had the you know, garage door opener company just come and do it for me. Either way, it's not just $3,600, $3,700 to get the lift. You're into it a lot more. There's a lot more hidden costs, a lot more work to do to really get it set up. By the time it's all said and done, I think I'm probably into this about $4,600, and that's me doing all the labor. That's really not that bad at the end of the day, because now I can store two cars, because I've got another car coming in the next couple of weeks that's gonna sit here and I just flat out need the room. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. And hopefully now that I'm done move from Western Washington down here to Texas, I can get back into my life and get things going again because the next step is I'm building a shop.